years ago at a Capital Ideas event. I don't know if anybody knows what Capital Ideas was, but it's a really cool networking thing the journal put on. And uh, this was a good guy. So when I called him to present my previous employer and then to get here, he was just so nice to, to give us time to come and, and speak. So he's uh, the principal at, at Spurl and Associates CPA, just downtown, really nice offices with parking right out front. Um, so I'm really looking forward to hearing what Josh has to say today, and there will be time for questions, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're, awesome. yeah, yeah. Okay, um, you know, I'm happy to be here today, guys, you know, speak in front of uh, entrepreneurs and people who are thinking about starting businesses. This is actually, you know, kind of my passion. Uh, I spoke with Cecile before, and they were uh, financial advisors, and it was a little more technical. Um, you know, I actually prefer speaking in front of entrepreneurs. Um, I think that's uh, really my passion. Um, you know, and I'd like to give a hand to Cecile and the you know the organization I made because this is a fantastic opportunity that you guys have to you know to get to learn from people in the industry. So I didn't really get that opportunity. I, I was in school. I had to you know learn it by the school hard knocks, uh, so to speak. So uh, it's good that you guys uh, you know, get that diverse skill set that you know, it's really difficult for, for one teacher to, to, to give you guys, right? So um, so what I'm going to have to do, so it's going to be a little bit interactive here. It might, might shock a few people here today, but we're, we're not going to stay completely seated here. Um, I'm going to have everybody in the room stand up. Right here. Okay. Now I'm going to divide in half, you know, kind of right there with the uh, uh, Adidas right there. I'm going to have you on that side, okay? And I'm going to have you on that side. So, um, right now you guys are all entrepreneurs. People standing up here, we're all entrepreneurs. We're the entrepreneurial population, okay? So, um, what I'm going to have here is, every from, from Adidas to Yahweh right there, that kind of third of that room, I want you guys to sit down, just right now. Just you guys, everyone else stay standing. You can look at the people sitting down, that's good. So these are the third of business owners here. Um, these are the one third, so half of all business owners are gonna fail, okay, in five years. That's a statistical fact. And that's the, the most optimistic numbers I can find you, the, the most pessimistic are 80%. So those third will fail uh, because they don't generate enough revenue. That's, that's the reason, okay? Now, everybody, uh, you know, these guys right here, Kevin, uh, the Nate hoodie right there, you guys can sit down again. Okay, uh, you, guys will you guys will fail because you ran out of cash. Second most common reason that any business is gonna fail, okay? Um, I'm gonna have these two guys sit down right here. You guys are gonna fail, okay, because you couldn't find the right team. Okay, so those three reasons. Revenue, you couldn't generate enough revenue, you uh, couldn't find the right team, okay, or you ran out of cash, okay? I'm gonna have just one more, just lazy Sunday, fall down. That person's gonna fail for all of the other reasons. So all the other reasons like location, timing, you know, like health problems, they got sued, they're very insignificant compared to the three top reasons. If we could solve those three top reasons, we would have 80 or 90% of the reason that the people still in business. So I want you guys to you know, look at the other people that are sitting down now. You guys all started out in this entrepreneurial journey. And it can sound a little bit trivial. It can kind of sound like a video game where, okay, you lost, hit the reset button, you go back. And that's kind of the way we quantify businesses sometimes. But really, it's not that good, okay? What happens when businesses go under are, you know, savings evaporate, people go bankrupt, families break up, people fall into depression. It's actually really kind of bleak. And, you know, it's not really talked about a whole lot, okay? Um, what happens, and myself as an accountant, I keep seeing that after, because we see the aftermath. You guys hear about businesses when they're in businesses, but we have to keep filing for them right until the bitter end. You see how it eventually works out. So, and this is a huge deal. 5% of our population here in Alberta, pretty much Canada, it's a little higher in Alberta, but 5% of the population, they're entrepreneurs. And what's more impactful is 50% of all people who have jobs are employed by businesses with 10 people or less. 
So this is an enormous impact on our economy. And our inability to prevent this has significant, um, you know, significant impacts. So you guys can sit down just for a minute here. Um, so it's for that reason that I start to view businesses a little bit different than the average population, I think. You know, I, I've been doing this for over a decade now, and uh, you know, it's difficult for me to not separate that it's not just a numbers game. It's not just a reset button, okay? Um, I start to view businesses, you know, the way some people would view, you know, babies or kittens or the environment. Um, they're a living organism with real consequences when things go wrong. And so, you know what, we're going we're gonna to do something a little unique here. Might make for a little bit of clickbait here. Um, but we're going we're gonna to really drive that point home. Businesses are living organisms, and they have real impacts when they don't work out. So what we have here are we have two living, breathing entrepreneur trees. And these guys right here, right here, safety's first here. So I need you guys to step up and just take a little step back here. You guys are good. Except for Cole, because he's on our team, and we're all about over-delivery. <laughs> And he's a Calgary Flames fan, so if it's not safe, that's okay. We, we're we're going to spare Paul, keep everyone in the back. So these are living, breathing, entrepreneurial businesses. With real consequences, if this doesn't go right. Now Nate may never let me back after that. <laughs> So this is why what you need to see businesses. Now some people are going to look at that. That is a real tree. That's not a fake tree. So something had to die in order for this to happen. And babies or kittens were not an option. So it was going to be the tree. The guys at home people thought it was crazy. Um, so that's what's happening here. Of course, that guy with T4 taxes, the one who got it, the Sperlon Associates tree, is still intact. But that's a that's a different story. Um, so that's how we need to start looking at businesses. Is there you know living, breathing organisms? Okay. Um, now, going to sleep every night knowing that stat, that's bad enough, you know, 5% of all the population. Imagine if you knew there was a disease out there affecting 2.5 people out of every 100. Imagine if it was secondary effect of, you know, 50% of all the people who had jobs. It would be vastly different, I think. So, but what the more important part is, is that these errors are preventable. And that's where it becomes a little bit more of importance, that these things here, you know, they can be prevented. And I know this because you know, I've been studying small businesses for pretty much two decades. I've been working as a CPA for, for more than a decade. Well, I had another small business before that. I've consumed copious amounts of material, hours and hours a day for, for decades at this point in time. And you start to see real common common kind of themes on what works and what doesn't. So we have some, some favorite business books here right now. Um, anybody who goes to Spurl and Associates right now, there's going to be a video demonstration of our entrepreneur tree falling down. Anybody who shares that to bring awareness to this issue, I'm going to free copy of one of my favorite books. So just stick your phone up in the air after you did it, y'all will come around and help it to you. So, um, so what we, uh, what we need to realize here is that there are actually proven strategies that when you start to consume these materials, they're very common. Some people are way out in left field, some people are way out in right field. When you start to consume them, they're very common. And anecdotally, I can see it because I see business owners come in who deploy various strategies and the ones who deploy certain strategies are effective not every time, but a significantly higher percentage of the time. Um, and that's what I really want to bring awareness to. So the problem with these strategies is they're a little bit counterintuitive with, I'm going to call it entrepreneur facade. Um, when you're looking on Instagram and you, you uh, search hashtag entrepreneur, and you're going to see a Rolex watch, and a Lamborghini, and a girl in a bikini, and a private jet, um, and someone working on the beach for two hours 
and some sort of click funnel from a guy who's never built a business before. Um, that's what you're going to see when we're looking at entrepreneurs. And the problem with the proven strategies is they're a little bit boring and they look like work. And that is the issue with the strategy. So it's not that the other strategies don't work, it's that they will, they will work at a far less percentage of the time, okay? It's kind of like, who's a Oiler fan in here? Is anybody a hockey fan in here? Imagine if the team designed an entire system that only worked if every player on the team skated like Connor McDavid. That's what they got. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit, that's a little bit upset, I can tell, okay. Um, but yeah, that is what some of these uh, business strategies that you get, and you gotta remember a lot of business strategies that you're getting out there from people who, you might wanna Google them sometime. Have they ever had a business? Do they have a team that they manage? Or are they just putting out content? Um, and that can be a, a little bit of a, uh, a misnomer. Or their only business is putting out content and, and outsourcing everything they do. And now you get started and you want to be a plumber or you want to be an electrician. Guess what? You, you can't really outsource that electrical guy who's going to come in to help you to India. You want to start a bakery here in town. It's not going to work so well for you. 